Hello, this is Dr. Andrew Lane. I'm one of the OBGYN residents here at Greenville Memorial Hospital and the Department of OBGYN. Uh, today we're going to have a talk about the safe use of magnesium sulfate in pregnancy. Uh, as you'll learn on your rotations or have already seen, magnesium is a very commonly used medication on labor and delivery, but it does have some side effects and there are some various circumstances where you'd want to use it differently. And that's what we'll be reviewing here today. Uh, magnesium has been in a lot of literature recently due to an FDA statement in 2013. The FDA statement changed the category and pregnancy status of magnesium from a category A drug to a category D drug. And the reason for this change was to concerns to the fetal bone structure. Um, the reason for the change is that the FDA um, was concerned that they were due to fetal bone demineralization and also bone demineralization in the neonate after birth, which would lead to fractures due to long-term use. Of course, uh, magnesium has been used in the obstetrics for many years, and as a result of this, ACOG then published their own statement in conjunction with the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine, which continued their support of the use of magnesium sulfate in pregnancy in the appropriate conditions and in a safe manner. Um, one of the many flaws that the ACOG and SMFM position statements pointed out is that the FDA statement was addressing unindicated and non-standard uses of magnesium in pregnancy. They also were basing this entire statement on there, uh, there being only 18 reported cases to the FDA reporting system uh, regarding any of these complications. The average duration of the exposure in the FDA database was 9.6 weeks with an average magnesium total amount of 3,700 grams. This is a much larger duration and a much higher dose than is currently recommended for use in obstetrics. Also of note is that magnesium sulfate has been used for decades in thousands of women in clinical trials for magnesium use for various such indications. And there, in any of these studies, there has never been a concern for bone demineralization or fracture in any of these studies in the past. So now what we're going to do is go through each of the currently recommended uses and discuss how to use magnesium safely. The first area we're going to address is prevention of seizures in patients with preeclampsia. First we're going to examine the evidence. Uh, research has shown us that in preeclampsia magnesium sulfate decreases the rate of eclamptic seizures by 50%. Systematic reviews have subsequently shown that magnesium sulfate is superior to all other anticonvulsant drugs for use in pregnancy. And the next we're going to address is who should get magnesium in these situations. There is a bit of discrepancy. ACOG recommendations currently do not recommend magnesium for non-severe, for preeclampsia without severe features. However, here at GHS, our OB teaching service, uh, Department of Maternal Fetal Medicine, has recommended that we use magnesium in these patients. However, both ACOG and our OB teaching service agree that in preeclampsia with severe features, magnesium use is recommended. Next, we're going to address how to safely use magnesium in these patients. In patients that have IV access, which is the majority of our patients, you give it, we give a 6 gram IV bolus over a course of 15 to 20 minutes which is then followed by two grams per hour maintenance dose. What we do is we continue this through, the, through delivery into the postpartum period. If the preeclampsia does not have severe features, this can be discontinued when the patient has been greater than six hours postpartum or has had greater than two hours of the urine output greater than 100 cc's. And patients with preeclampsia with severe features, this should be continued for a duration of 24 hours postpartum. The next area we're going to address is the use of magnesium sulfate for fetal neuroprotection for preterm infants. The evidence in this circumstance has, shown, has been shown by three large randomized trials and three meta-analyses that followed these studies. What they have shown is that magnesium reduces the occurrence of cerebral palsy in surviving infants when given with neuroprotective intent. They have shown a 30% decrease in any type of cerebral palsy and a 40-45% to decrease in handicapping form of cerebral palsy. Here at the MFM department, we use a protocol from the BEAM study. It was the largest trial in the United States. But just to realize that there, are other, there have been three other studies that use different protocols at different gestational ages, and none of them have been shown superior to the others. 
Also of note, our MFM department uses magnesium from 32 to 34 weeks gestational age, but realize that the benefit of the use beyond 32 weeks has yet to be proved. Next, we're going to address which of these patients should get magnesium. Here at Greenville Health System, we recommend from 24 weeks and zero days gestation to 33 weeks and six days gestational age. Those, specifically those that are at high risk for delivery within the next 24 hours. Next, we're going to address how to give magnesium in these situations. We recommend a 6 gram loading dose over a course of 20 to 30 minutes, followed by a 2 gram per hour maintenance dose. We recommend continuing this for at least 3 hours until at least 3 hours prior to delivery. However, if delivery does not occur after 12 hours is otherwise no longer imminent, we recommend discontinuing magnesium. If greater than 6 hours have passed, you can restart the mag bolus, otherwise restart with 2 grams per hour maintenance after it has been stopped and delivery is again imminent. The next use of magnesium we're going to address is tocolysis for those, people, for those patients that have preterm contractions. The evidence in this circumstance has shown that tocolytic therapy may provide short-term prolongation of pregnancy up to 48 hours, enabling the administration of antenatal steroids, mag for neuroprotection, and transport to a tertiary care facility. Be aware, however, that no, there has been no evidence that suggests tocolytic therapy has any direct favorable effect on, the ne on neonatal outcomes or that the prolongation of pregnancy offered by tocolysis translates into significant or ne significant neonatal benefit. ACOG supports the use of first-line first tocolytics for short-term prolongation of pregnancy for up to 48 hours to allow for steroids. However, ACOG does not include magnesium as a first-line tocolytics. So in these circumstances with preterm labor, you will be using it mostly for neuroprotection. Next, we'll address who should get magnesium in these circumstances. Essentially, as we just discussed, you'll be using this mostly for fetal nerve protection with antitocolysis as an added benefit, and as such, you should use the same recommendations as we recommend for preterm, for fetal, um, for fetal nerve protection for preterm deliveries. And the same goes for the recommendations on how to give magnesium in these circumstances. We recommend following the same protocol as that for fetal nerve protection. Next, what we're going to address is toxicity. As we said, as we have shown, magnesium has many uses in pregnancy when used safely with many benefits. However, there is a chance of there being toxicity in pregnancy, and magnesium can be a dangerous drug. If you look at the spectrum of magnesium in the bloodstream, the therapeutic range is defined as be being between 4.8 to 8.4 milligrams per deciliter. This is the safe range of magnesium use. If we, if we go beyond this range to a blood level of 9.6 to 12 milligrams per deciliter, the first sign you'll see is a loss of patellar reflexes. And this is the reason why we always check reflexes during each of the notes on our patients on magnesium. From a level of 12 to 18, we start to see respiratory paralysis. And at a level of 24 to 30, we see cardiac arrest. If you're ever in a circumstance where you do have a case of magnesium toxicity, there's an easier way to reverse it, and this is through the use of calcium gluconate. Some of the other things you'll notice while patients are on magnesium are the effects on fetal heart rate tracings. You'll notice that when the patient starts magnesium, there'll be a, lo there'll be a loss of fetal heart rate variability and accelerations, although the fetus in this circumstance You'll notice there's a loss of variability as well as accelerations. However, in these circumstances, the fetal status is not compromised. This is the end of our discussion on the safe use of magnesium sulfate in pregnancy. Thank you.